What's going on guys, Charles Warren, AKA The Handsome Home Brian. We have the dynamic duo, David and Goliath, Joe Salemi, and my man, Good. Rob Scotch, who I've known since sixth grade, I think seventh, because he's a year younger than me, even though he's six foot seven, and I'm hopefully five foot nine and a half on a good day. Okay. What the fuck was I supposed to say? Here's the podcast. Here's the podcast, check it out. <laughs> Yeah, kid. Welcome, welcome, everybody, back to the first episode of Smells Like Cat Pee with Handsome. Just think about it. Like, just everyone's like, you're fucking nuts, bro. Like, you you can't name it Smells Like Cat Pee. So I was thinking about, I was talking to Emily, who just had a kid. You know Emily? Emily. Uh, Emily Briggs Shortell. She went to Wanta with us. I don't know. She works with she works with me upstairs. She works uh, in property management. She's on my stories if all the I time. If I saw her, I might be able to it was, she was a very She was very pregnant up until yesterday. No, I don't know her. So she's gonna run our um, creative department. All right. As we build this bad boy out, and she's like, "You gotta like, we gotta change up the name. Like, I think we need a different name for the podcast." If the handsome home buyer podcast doesn't work, you're the handsome home buyer, it's right? Just, and the somehow that doesn't work for you. It just, you know what it is? It's just, it's like, it's just boring. All right. For Fair me, enough. it's like boring. It's like naming a business after yourself. Right. So. I start looking up like different podcast names and I'm like, what are the big podcasts outside of like the, the Joe Rogan experience? They all have like some crazy names. So I'm like, all right, what is crazy that embodies what I do on a daily basis? And I'm like, cat pee. I talk <laughs> about that commercial all the time. I mean, bro, we were, we were, in, yeah. the house, we were in a house yesterday. I think it's amazing. I think that was human pee, but that, still, same thing, synonymous. It's all right, yeah, still pee. That, that was a, that was a, a mix of, um, of, yeah, death. of, of <laughs> recent passing, God rest his or her soul and, and human pee. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, all right, smells like happy with handsome. Like I'm at the point in my career where I have to do like the P Diddy, Puff Daddy, Diddy thing, where I feel like I have to reinvent myself. Okay. So first it was Puff Daddy, then he turned to what? P Diddy. P Diddy. Was after that. Like, now, Sean was Puffy Diddy. now he's just Diddy. Diddy. Right. Now he just did right. So you were a handsome home buyer, handsome. No, now I'm just handsome. Yeah. HHB. I, I, you know what? I was I was handsome home buyer, HHB, HH. Now I'm just going to be handsome. All right. I like it. The irony is, um, nobody knows my name, like my real name. When I go out into the I, world- I don't even think I know your name. I've bro, known you a very long again. time. A really long time. Yeah, what is it? I, my earliest- Chuck, Charlie, Charles. Which Chip, one do you go by? Chips. Chip. Chip. I don't even, do you like- Handsome. I mean, most people just, yeah, handsome now. There it is. What's he it? always refers to you as Charlie, but I know yeah. you introduce yourself as Charles, Charles. so yeah. I call you Charles. Everybody calls you Joe, right? Yeah. But your real name is Joseph. Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I go by Rob. Yeah. Robert. Robert. Yeah. Rob. Yeah. Do you like Charles better or Charlie? You know what it is? I'm at to the point where I like, I don't actually hear it. I just respond. Yeah. So people are like, what do you prefer? I'm like, you know what? I don't really know because I don't really hear it. I just turn around, we start interacting. You hear Chuck yeah. and you, you're right. Chips, people, yeah, chips. Well, you were always Charlie in school. So that's why I always call you Charlie. So for everybody out there, two fire real estate agents, we're doing a ton of deals. I'm fucking fired up about it. Right? Rock and rolling. Joe Saloni, Rob Scotcha. They're gonna be starting their own. I'm putting it out here right now. So there's a certain level of accountability. They're going to be starting their own podcast soon. Ah, called David. I and like Go it. David and Goliath. You're putting us on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. All right. All right. All so right. this way, in 10 years, when you guys are making like 300K a month in advertisements because you're killing it, because you guys are fucking funny. Like together as a duo, you're great. And it's very cool. And I want to talk about like partnership relationships because you guys are our partners, right? You're building a real estate team together. Yes. You guys are killing it with no social media, which is what's really blowing my mind. Very limited Very social, limited social media. media. Yeah, let's, let's not go yeah, no, there's what some we do there. is, Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty close. To, it's closer to no than doing yes, something. Yes, correct. So. But um, partnerships in life, like in marriage as in business, are very difficult. And you guys seem to have this very like awesome, complimentative thing. Going. It's organic. It's, you know, we just like each other, yeah. which maybe that'll wear out eventually. <laughs> this but sounds like marriage. Yeah. He's, he's my seven best friend. Seven years. He's my yeah. best friend. I just want to hang yeah, out with that's him. That's it. Which is literally what somebody told me last week is like the key to a successful marriage. I mean, my... I. Love my wife and you've been with her since high school. No, no, no. We were friends in high school. Guys and girls and... are never friends, bro. You wanted to hit it the entire way through. High <laughs> well, absolutely. All right, listen. You know, maybe, but in our twenties, we started kind of getting, <laughs> you know, a little bit more serious. But I, you know, it is that is the key. We're we're best friends. And, and yeah. what's funny yeah. is yeah. We, we talk about you know the synergy between us. My wife and I met in high school as well. Okay. So we wow. dated, then we didn't date, yeah. you know, through our twenties, and then we wound up, you know, getting back together, and you know, we're married seventeen years. So. Yeah. It come, Rob and I 
figured out that we're kind of cut from the same cloth. Exact same life. He worked for his father's business. Okay. I worked for my father's business. That's yeah, just a, a, a lot of real similarities in our lives. And, so, and that only comes out little by little. It's not like you have course. that conversation and you go, oh, we, you know, like, yeah, yeah. do we just become best friends? It's yeah, like yeah, as you start yeah. to know Step someone, you're like, hey, you want to work together? Hey, you want to do this together? And then you start to see this, the same patterns. And then as you look back on your relationship building, you're like, wow, we did that together. This yeah. is the same. So, well, How long are you guys working together for? Three years. I, to, well, Four years? Th together, it's been like two and a half. But right. You were you were the manager at Keller. Right. So I was managing Keller, and and <laughs> Rob came in. I was recruiting, obviously, okay. as a as a manager. You recruiting. Yeah. So Rob came in, and I remember um, a lot of guys would come in for real estate, you know, and some guys would come in dressed in shorts and flip flops, and some guys would come in. Rob came in, I believe, in a suit, full suit, full suit, like it was an interview. Wow. Um, Andrew, resume. Andrew as well. Resume with me. I yeah, had yeah, no idea what I was doing. I was like, and, and I'll be yeah. honest with you, the funny part, when I joined when I joined real estate 14 years ago, I went to Century 21 and yeah. I walked in with a suit and a resume because yeah. to that's me, you that's, do, you know, that's right? what we were taught. You want to be professional. And there wasn't, yeah. there wasn't a lot of people who did that. So yeah. I, I, as a recruiter, you get to know people who walk in the door right away if they're going to be successful or not. And, and you know in this industry. You did it, Andrew did it, a few other people did it, yep. and these guys, you know, you when knew. When you got somebody, a funny story, when you got somebody who you know walks in and they're just gonna be a complete mess in real estate. Oh, dude, you need your own podcast so bad. They, you're, you're ready for this. You just, you're just like, you're dialed in. You're like, give me a mic, I'm go. I, I just gonna, I just gonna, I just wanna put this out. We would do the 100 contact test. So you'd walk in and I'd look you up and down. You'd be like, yeah, I really want to do real estate. I, I, yeah, I got my license. Contact? And if I didn't think they'd be a good fit for either culture wise or just not okay. going to, I don't want to say waste my time on teaching them. Okay. I go, here's what I need you to do that. Go take a hundred index cards and put contacts on them. Okay. Name, contact. address, phone number, got it. email if you got it. A people that and you know. Come back to me in a week. Got it. And not one person ever came back. And that, was, that was the way I mean, to weed them out without tough. telling them you wouldn't be a great fit. You, I, you know what? Come back with 30. Yeah, and right. say that's all I could do. Right, I right. knew you made the effort. So you know what's interesting though? Not like, one person. Yeah, that's funny. Like we were talking about offline before. I'm like, listen, if I was gonna, <clears> ever going to start a brokerage, you would have to have meet certain criteria and also be there. Yeah. Traditionally, brokers take anybody and anybody with a heartbeat who wants to come all in. The shit that so it's interesting you. that you're the first person, you're the first recruiter, a manager that I've heard of that that doesn't take everybody. Yeah, you know, when I was managing that, that was always my, I wanted a good office with a good culture of people who could foster each other's growth. Okay. I want people who are gonna help each other grow. Yeah. You could have people that walked in and you knew off the bat, you know, that so, they weren't gonna be part of that culture. And without, more you know, without insulting them and saying, hey, look, we don't think you're a great fit here because no, no broker ever wants to say that. I'd say, look, here's your first task. If you come back and you do it, then I know you're into it. And I'll tell you, I probably said it 10 to 15 times in the year and a half, two years. Not one person ever came back into the office. They were like, this is too, tough either this is too hard. People. Like I said, show me you came back with 25 or 30. Yeah. That's got good enough for me. Yeah. So Fair how enough. did this come together from your standpoint? Like what drew you to Joe? Was it like just this organic thing of like knowing, like just learning about each other over time and seeing commonalities? Because part yeah. of this stuff is like, why did you, why did you decide to partner on your end? Well, so when I got in, obviously I didn't know my ass from my elbow. I had no idea what I was doing. And he took the time what and What made invested. you get into real estate? So Rob and I <clears throat> grew up together, right? Earliest memory of homeroom. Yes. I was in eighth grade, you were in... Seven, I was a year, you were in 97, I graduated in 98, right? Yeah, you were six, four at the time. Somewhere right, around there. Probably there. Probably 140 pounds. And what are you now, six, like seven? Six, six, 250. Tell the people at home, like you told me the other day, and I, cause I quote this all the time, it's not all fun and games being tall. It's not at all. I mean, like the, the, like the clothes, I have about? to get everything tailored. Uh, good luck finding shirts that fit, jeans, shoes. <laughs> you know, you got to order everything online and- Trying to wash your face. Yeah, forget it. Bending over at the sink. I got back problems, man. It's issues. <laughs> can't buy a issues car. on issues on issues. Yeah. Can't you get know? in a Porsche, Ferrari, anything no, like that if I, you want I just to. bought a Ford Expedition and my head is like, this far. He's like, I make it. He's like, like, I, I did it. I don't I hit the, the headliner right in this car. He I gets in right my car yeah. and, and he's like in the back seat. And then it's funny because my wife is 4'9". So she'll get in the wow. next day. Like I'll yeah. go to lunch with him and then yeah. she'll get in that, that evening to go out. <laughs> like, and she gets in the car. <laughs> and, <four laughs> and she's like, fucking Rob in the car again. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not all fun and games, people. Everybody wants to be tall. I'm here to tell you that six two six three is probably the right. Like color. the magic height. That's a, yeah, I'd be magic. happy with six foot. Um, six is good too, but six two I think is is that's your cutoff. So you and I have similarities. That's that A we grew up together, and yep. then B I was in the body shop business. You were in the body shop Correct, business as yeah, well. Yep. Family business. Yep. 
Uh, I'm curious for you to touch on that and then why you ended up getting to real estate afterwards. Cause that's like, it's pretty random. Like they're not like, they're not close. I always had a, a, a like for real estate and investing. When I was 20, I was out of work and my mom was working for an investment company. And um, uh, she was like, she took me to a job fair and I wound oh, up meeting cool. this guy and he worked for uh, this investment company, Donald and Company. And he's like, listen, I, I like you. You seem like a good kid. Why don't you come work with me? So he got me into cold calling and kind of really uh, breaking out of my early 20s shell, which I feel like a lot of people are in where yeah. you've, you're not exactly confident, but you have a little bit there, you know. Being so. in your 20s is a tough decade. Yeah, okay. so I loved that business. I wound up getting my Series 7 at 20, 21 years old. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, and uh, then the Twin Towers came down, which was wonderful for the markets, and a uh, 21-year-old trying to... I remember that. ...to break into it, you know, so... And that was it? Like... Yeah, I mean, you know, there were some there were some firms back then that weren't exactly doing the right thing, and I might have been in one and didn't realize it, and then I started seeing the telemarkers, and I was like, I'm out of here, I gotta go. You know, so guys were... Um, you know, trading the wrong securities and doing bad stuff. So I, I, I saw it and I was like, this is stupid. I, I'm out of here. They do the whole young. like throw the keys to the Ferrari on the table with the recruitment process? Yeah. yeah. Almost. Yeah. There is some of that. But, uh, some pomp and great circumstance. Great pumps me up. It's a great Dude. scene. Yeah. Great yeah. scene. We talk about that scene all the time. My coach told me to run that movie in the background while I'm making cold calls. Yeah. That or Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you know, have that in the background because you want to have that environment. I will say, oh, sorry to cut yeah. you off there, but they were talking, you talking about building teams. Yeah. I had to be there at 6 a.m. every day and I had to leave at 6 o'clock at night and I had like three breaks. They wanted me calling all day. So do Dude, I. But that's huge. So Bro, it was crazy. That, but that's amazing. Think about like, the, yeah. now you're like desensitized. Like, go F yourself, never call me yeah, again. No, okay, no, sir. No, no. And then you call him back. Yeah. Like the next week, hey, I'm the guy that told you, you told me to go f myself. How yeah. you, how you doing? How the kids? No, it was great prep. Because that's how great you. Prep. That's the best how you get is when they hang up on you and you go. I think we got disconnected. Yes, <laughs> that's just the best way. Just, just call it back. right. Just have fun with it. Because that's how deals happen. Like like I, I made a video about it the other day called charismatic torture. Yeah. Like you literally have to torture these people. Yeah. Forever. Yep. We were just talking about it before. Top of the funnel to bottom of the funnel. You know, I think the difference between a good agent that does a lot of business and an agent that doesn't really do much is those top of the funnel guys, you really have to attend to them just like you're attending to the bottom of the funnel guys because eventually they're going to siphon their way down to the bottom of the funnel. And if you, there's a lot of people that just go, eh, eh, I, did I don't that need to call this guy. I don't need to touch no. base. I don't need to send something. You know, if they weren't buying or selling right now, when I first got in, I was part time. And if it was like they weren't a buy and sell them right now, I had no system to keep up with them or anything. Well, that's the thing too. Like the follow-up system, like with a CRM and all that, because we're dealing with that right now, like it's not easy. Yep. It's no. not. Like, and I use this example, like, I mean, it's recent from last week. I hit up Brian Carp, I'm like, yo, I need to talk to you about something. He goes, I'm calling 150 people. As soon as I'm done calling 150 people, yeah. I'll call you back. So like He's a every boss. day- I'm surprised he even answered the phone. Usually, yeah. you know, when you're calling, that's it. My, 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 you know, my coach will tell me, put the phone away for two hours. Yeah. You don't call anybody. No, no, no distractions. No What's nothing. really cool about you is like you have, you currently have a coach. Yeah. So you currently have a coach. You were a manager, a recruiter of Keller. I was a productivity coach too for the, for the newer agents or yeah. people who wanted to build their business and at you've Keller. you've been in the game for 14 years. Right. That's, and I still have a coach. That's awesome. Yeah. Never stop learning. You got to. Yeah. Right. Never. Because there's always something. You know, it's not even just my coach, my individual coach. I coach with Tom Ferry. So the whole mm -hmm. ecosystem is great. Nice. Because there's there's a lot of value to webinars and stuff that they do. Because we're always changing, you know. Of course. We're always changing. So, and I pass my stuff along to Rob and I go, hey, my coach and I talked yeah, about this. Yeah, he's kind and of my coach. He's like, you know, you know what? That's a great idea. Which yeah. getting Let's back try. on track of where we were. Yeah, how did it come together? So, I, you know, I was in the back room, really had no idea what I was doing. And he kind of, you know, he guided me and he put the time in to kind of teach me what to do and where to start and how to get things moving. And, um, Scripts, you know, I always play. say... You know, when somebody's trying to impart some wisdom on you and you don't really know what you're doing, take it. You got to take it because yeah. they know what they're doing. You know, walk in the footsteps of giants and figure out what they did to get there before you. And I always took that mantle up and he was always super kind and like everything was great. And then when he came off the management role, I think we just had a good relationship. I'll tell you what it was. It was like six or eight know, months what, after. What, what, here's, here's, what drew you to him? Here's the linchpin. Here's, how, here's exactly where it started. Does he, does he know this? Uh, I, he will when I say it. Yeah. My manager's office had two desks in it. Yeah. And he was like on the floor. You know, it was an old office and he was just out on the floor. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to make these calls. So one day he asked me, he's like, do you mind? I know you're leaving early. Do you mind if I sit in your office and, and use the other desk? And I'm like, no, go ahead, man. Go, yeah, go do it. Do your thing. And then I would come in and he was there before me maybe. And he'd be already at the desk. 
I just sit next to him, I'm taking his desk. And then after, after you know, after I was <laughs> this done, guy threw me out of the office. Yeah, no, I didn't. You know, it was like, like, like I can't um, be recruited anymore. I got nowhere to sit. And I said, doing sales. Yeah, and after after managing and, and that was done, we still had the office. And I looked, I just turned to one day, and I was like, hey. You want to what? You want to start a team? I'm gonna put a team yeah. together. Yeah, and we're both pressed for time with the kids and the families and stuff. I like don't know that. how so, you do it, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, there's guys that do much more than we do with families. We were talking about Brian Carp. I mean, he's a family man, you know. But it, it's hard. It's really hard. So we, I think, both were like, look, we have a lot of business kind of coming in. We have a lot of opportunities here. Why not try and spread a little bit and see if we can't start something? And, and to clarify, not just you sitting in the office with me. Yeah. I knew how hard he was working. I knew how he was listening to what I said. Hey, yeah. you want to grow? This is what you need to do. And he was like, okay, I'll do it. And he was, and I could see him coming in every day and working hard. And I said, this is the type of guy I want to align myself <clears throat> with because we have the same values. So at the gate, you were cold calling. That's how you were generating leads? Yeah, expireds and fizzbos, man. No shit. All day, every day all day every day and Holy then i would call sphere i would call like people i knew yeah. people from the shop people from you know yeah. random walks of life he's go through your cell phone call everybody in your cell phone tell them that it's, it's, true. Real That's real it's shit. an exercise i did all the time in training That's i go real. guys open your cell phone scroll to the bottom how many contacts 439 600 700 200 yeah. so there you go there's 200 calls go ahead yeah. call them tell me you're in real estate and i make them that's it I would Remember. love to see you in the office, bro. You were fired up. You were I fired did. Up. I mean, training, he was the best. We, we he really was the best team leader. Gongs, like, yeah, yeah I just, <laughs> I, oh, man. So let me ask you this question. A, what made you get go from sales into management, and then what made you leave management and go back into sales? So, All right, so we got to be truthful, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. absolutely. Um, so I was a graphic designer for 20 years. I had a family business, commercial print. Okay. We closed down in, um, I forgot, 2006 <laughs> or so. And I got my real estate license because I said, all right, man, I'll try real estate and sales. And then one of my largest clients that, that we did work for, a multinational company, called me, said, we want you to run a, a graphic design department. Okay. And they gave me a really good salary. So I got my license and I was doing side deals, but I was still working in an industry that didn't make me happy. Got it. So when I took the leap, I put six in contract. I was making, you know, six figures for this company. I need, needed to make that because I had a house. My kids were young. You know, I couldn't just not yeah. make any money. I, yeah. You know, so I, um, so I left the company. I had six in contract. I said, this will carry me through a few months for me to build. That's really smart. And I went to Keller Williams because the, the that's training how people was supposed should to be do awesome. it in my opinion. Right. And that's how I would coach people that were transitioning. Now, you know, normally people aren't making 100 and change. They usually, young kids making 40, 50, and they go, how do I do it? And I go, it's going to be a joke. Don't worry about it. We got yeah, it. You, you still live, live at home. Yes. Right. So I made the jump. And summer came and I'm closing deals and I'm like, okay, uh, great. We played golf. I went to the beach with my wife. She's off all summer. I spent time with the kids. We went on vacation. And then like November came, my wife's like, all right, you got any closings coming up? You know, it's Christmas time. And I'm like, no, no, I don't have anything. She said, why not? I said, I guess August and September That's and July like, when man. I was supposed to be making calls and meeting people, I kind of, you know, we were at the beach and hanging out. I just thought it would come to me. Yeah. So at that time, the owners at Keller Williams and Massapequa came to me because they liked me a lot because I was in the office a lot. And they said, um, hey, everything about managing. And I said, how much does it pay? Because I had no money. Yeah. You know, it's the wow. truth. That's and they said 60000 mm -hmm. plus you get a bonus for yeah, what the override. office does. Yeah, yeah, override and everything. I said, I'll, yep, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll do it. And I was still putting deals through other people, but it wasn't, I wasn't prospecting. And I started managing and really because I needed the money. Yeah. And then when I realized that managing really wasn't for me, I, I needed to be out in sales. Be we made the transition back and I, it's been better. You know, now that I follow what I trained for two years yeah. and follow the model of, you know, what you're supposed to do, it's been amazing. So what was your training like to become a manager though? Um, they sent me to Austin. So I, I took classes on, you know, all of their classes from beginning to end, three full days of classes the first time, then five full days, uh, how to train the trainer. So I was trained. Then they gave me all the syllabuses and coursework. And, you know, and I learned from other TLs and uh, I learned how to manage an office. I mean, I'd always been a manager in my past life. I always had people under me, you know, 20, 30 people under me. So managing wasn't the hard part. It was the real learning real estate and the training. That was the hard part. That's interesting. And then the more you train, you know, if I taught a class, if I taught Ignite 10 times, yeah. you st it starts to nature. stick in you. Yeah. What's Ignite? It's, the, it's their beginning class takes you from zero to like 16 transactions. And yeah. it's about cold calling and what you're supposed per to do. Per year. Per year. Now, when you get to 16 or 20, then you go to the next class in Keller Williams. So, um, but, but teaching all of these classes on cold calling and, and time blocking and every class they had to offer started, you know, after a while, it oh, sinks like, in on you. And yeah, then when I left, when I, you know, when I wasn't with Keller anymore, it didn't matter. I had... 
had you know, knowledge. I had all this knowledge. It burned into your, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I just kept telling everybody else to do it. Now it's like, oh, okay, well, I know what to do, time block and everything. So, you know, Rob so, and I, you know, we, we stuck together. And um, the first year we did a bunch of transactions. Last year was our first full year, right? Yeah. Yep. And with COVID, we did almost 40. I think, I think it was 42. 40, 42 transactions yeah. with COVID. And now we're already at 33 sides. I think I counted. Halfway through the year. Yeah. Halfway through the year, we're at 33 sides. That's now. sick. Yeah. So. That's really good. Yeah, bro, that's so crazy shit. Yeah. And then partnering up with you, of course, has been great. Yep. Obviously. Yeah, we got more coming. We got right? more coming. I'm so excited. I'm yeah. going to go knock on every door of every dilapidated <laughs> so, house. We were just talking about it before. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, something that needs to be filtered into the portfolio of what we do because it's, you, you know. You need a healthy mix of business. Yes. You have to. Like, and everything I've ever done. Like, when I was in the body shop business, I had a Mako. So we would have like, I would say you need a healthy mix. So you do like a couple bumper jobs a week. You'd be doing just some regular paint jobs, some light collisions, and then someone would bring in like some old piece of crap yep. that needed like a crazy restoration. Yep. And it would all kind of work in and flow together. Yeah. Same thing, like I have agents hit me up and they're like, I just want to work with you. I'm like, listen, I would love that, but that's not what's going to happen. It's not going to work for you, yeah. You have to go out there. Like, how do I find the house that's think like cat pee? I'm like, if I had the answer, like I'd be doing 300 a year. Well, it's as simple. You just go go knock on doors. I yeah. mean, yeah, make phone calls or knock on doors. That's the only way. Smell when you know, people like door. to sit. How am I going to, how yes. am I, yes. they like to sit in their office yes. though and go, yes. hey, how am I going to meet people to sell real estate? Yeah. I, not sitting here. Being a realtor is very freaking difficult. Like people don't get it. It is a difficult thing to do. Like you're, you're is out there. You have to plan your own day, time block. Motivate yourself to even plan your own Self day. Self-motivating is very difficult. It's hard. It I is. always said in classes, and Rob, I think this always stuck with you. Real estate is simple, not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can break it down and tell you exactly what to do every day for you to make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy, and that's the problem. Most you know, people don't want to work that hard. I think that's actually a dope quote, and it could be applied to anything. Like, I think everything is, is simple. It's simple. It's not easy. No. It's like, when you because when you really break anything down, like I'm building an assisted living facility. On the outside, you're like, this is crazy. When Sounds you really crazy. sit down and look at it, you're like, all right, I'm building a building. I need an operator. They're going to hire people, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's not going to be easy, yeah. but it's pretty simple. Organization has a lot to do with that, and being organized and figuring out exactly what you need to do and what you need to put in place to get the assisted living of course. place done you yeah know, see i'm looking at it, i'm like this is fucking <clears throat> bad who's got that? that's hard yeah but if you <laughs> sat down and i know made it great well, if you got the right people like around you, you too you, you know you surround out. yourself with the right people so yeah. that's that's what it, it means the team so interesting that all three of us were in family-esque businesses isn't that funny yeah, yeah. so what uh like how is that for you guys because for me i ended up i mean i love my daddy works with me now it's yeah. freaking great um, but at the same time, having a family business, even though like it was mine, but he was still there in a certain capacity, even though he was never there, it was uh, it was hard for me to do what I wanted to do. Like yeah. I wanted to rebrand Mako and come up with a totally different concept that I thought I could do better, and it was just too restrictive. Yeah. Having that dynamic, right? L little push and pull. Yeah. So it came to the point where I'm just like, you know what? This isn't going to work. I'm going to sell this. I'm going to train for real estate, and I I trained for three years before I ever did it, and then I did two deals and sold the Mako. But uh, what was that experience like for you guys? I think the father-son dynamic is tough. And you worked with your dad, I worked with my dad. In the first four years, it was a lot of trust building and him realizing that I was capable. I was 24 when I took the business over, so I was still pretty young, you yeah, know? Yeah, I was and, in the same ballpark, um, 23. You know, I think he was nervous that I was gonna do the wrong thing or kind of not get it moving in the right direction. But once he realized that I was capable, he, you know, he basically handed over the keys completely. He would come in, he'd hang out. It actually got really nice towards the end where we spent a ton of time together, really got to know my dad through and through. He got to know me through and through. And at the end, it was a little bittersweet because it was nice to sell a business and, um, you know, come out successful on the other side. But it was, I don't see my dad that much anymore. I'm busy, yeah. real estate, family, all this yeah. stuff. and. You know, if I see him once a month, once every two weeks, it's it's frequent. You know, so um, it, it was it was nice. But what, what was the feeling like? Like, what was the dynamic like between you and him when you basically three x the business? Um, I think at two x he he realized like okay, he's going to be okay and he's going to be good. And you know, when I sold it and I retained the building and I, I brokered that deal more or less, I think he was he was over the moon because he was making. He's making more money now than he was making when we had the had the business together. Right on the yeah. note because you had a note on uh, on, on the, on the, the real estate on the rents. You know, right. it's um, it was a fantastic deal for everybody involved. And um, did, you know, did I he ever? He turn... just is. You know, he, he's proud. Um, but I think did like he ever it, tell you that though? Yeah, at the That's end. Not... Uh, he, he said, you know, because that generation is not in, like I, right. my father too. Like that generation and is he's not all, emotional. He was it's born like, in Italy, nothing. Italian. Yeah. You know, it, it's very 
my my sister, I love you, I love you. You know, boys, it's different. And I even feel it with my son sometimes. I'm I'm harder on him than I am with my daughters. You know, it's just you. How old is he? He's three. How tall is he now? Uh, oh God, he looks. I'm telling you, we're at parties with like four and five year olds, and they're like, "What is that?" Well, your from? wife is tall too. She's five nine and a half, five ten. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you know. They're breeding giants over there. Yeah. <laughs> Vikings. You're leaving. What part of England do they have you guys? Yeah. He was uh, frozen owned, which is outside of Rome. And okay. then, you know, uh, Northern Italian. My mom was German and Irish too. Okay. So that, that helps as well. But uh, yeah, German. Who, when was the last time you met like a six, seven Irishman? I mean, Germans, Germans are tall. Are Germans really tall? Oh, yeah. Germans, yeah. Yeah. And the Northern Rome, Italians are tall because Rome. back yes. the Germanic Spikes. tribes Spikes. came down and sacked Rome. You know, that's huh? the Northern Italians are tall because the Germanic tribes came down and they sacked Rome. So you got a lot of German Italian blood up in the north of Italy. Yeah. So you go, now we go into a history podcast. Listen, we're going into I was a trying to remember the name of our high school history teacher who was the Mr. wrestling Ryan. coach. No, the guy from the high school history coach who told me I'm going to be nothing in a pig. What did he oh, say to wow. me? What was that guy's name? Mr. What? The bald guy? He might have said, you're not going to smell anything but cat piss the rest of your life. And you're like, yo, it's bullshit. And now it's like, yeah, I'm making millions of dollars doing it. So I was recapping on all the teachers that like told me I was shit like a couple minutes before you guys. I was, I was, uh, I was one of those kids. Were you? Yeah, Yeah, me too. F that, bro. Me too. Listen, it's going to be, we need to go back. It's not the path for everybody. I think, you know, high school and college and all these things, it's not the path for everybody. They don't give enough creative. Even my kids, like my daughter's really creative and sometimes she's like bored. And when you get bored at school, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to say stupid things. Well, that's what I think Keep them, keep them using their creative mind. Stop with, you know, the strict do this. Let them think outside the box. I think we don't do that enough anymore. You're hundred percent right. Education system's broken. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree. So. No, it's true. Mrs. Wyman, if you're out there. I, don't, I hope you are, but you're probably not because I in first grade and you want to leave me back. <laughs> was Mr. Up. Holly the uh, the wrestling coach? I think yes. he was the wrestling coach. Yeah, right? he screamed yeah. at me in the hallway and told me I was a pig and never be anything. All right. Interesting. Well, fuck right. you, Mr. Holly. Fuck you, Mr. Holly. Exactly. <laughs> I was trying to I don't even know you, but fuck you too. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. So, I mean, great dynamics. I mean, that's that's cool. That's cool that you guys had to spend that time together. It's cool that he yeah. was very encouraging. Because, like I said, that like I'm always curious to see what the dynamic is between fathers and sons and family businesses because it's not that easy. It's not easy. Right. <clears throat> what about you? Same thing. You know, I my father and I would sit in the conference room and we'd go to Bellagio's on 110. We knew the owner and we would get lunch and sit in the conference room almost every day. And my parents were divorced, but my mother still was a partner in the business. They were still best friends. Wow. So that was a great dynamic because my mother was still the bookkeeper secretary in the office. So wow. we um, we would have lunch every day. And, you know, like you said, Rob, you know, my dad would say to me, you know, someday if we don't have the business anymore, we're not going to have this every day. And I still, you know, I talk to him today and, and I love him very much, but you, you don't yeah. get to see him it's as often. Yeah. You know, he's like, who, what family do you know that gets to sit and eat lunch every day together? You know, and I'm eating like shrimp fried diavolo with linguine and he's got baked clams out and we, we would have the TV yeah. on. Not one push up eat. ripped as hell, not 47 one. years <laughs> old. <laughs> Um, but Meat yeah, same thing. Which is at nine o'clock. My dad morning. was very, very <laughs> no ice cream. No, no ice. But uh, ice cream. King. But Burger King. Yeah. That, I told you that. Is that confidence. an isolated incident? Yeah, I'm we sorry. Let's talk about that. I'm sorry. It's all, only sorry. the world. No, we're real. No, it's okay. going to happen. Okay. It's only the world it's that's watching. <laughs> it's out there now. It's okay. Um, yeah. So you know, just uh, he was always encouraging me. He always, you know, fostering my creativity and that's ideas good. and. And, uh, you know, just the commercial print industry just went downhill. The recession killed everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, people weren't, you know, we did high end cosmetic packaging and stuff, and it was just a dog eat dog business. And we got to a point where I said, you know, stop throwing bit, you know, well, good a lot money of outsourced the out of the country too, right? Yeah. It started moving out of the country. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's a, it's a small family business, but you have people trying to live off of it. And, yeah, you, know, of course. you know, I wanted to make a hundred grand at the time. And I think I was making like 60 and I'm like, you know, I'm worth more than that. So I, I had learned, but I had learned a lot of skills working there, estimating, like I'm sure you learned yeah. uh, the graphic design end of it, you know, print production, uh, color matching. You know, Definitely sales. Yeah. And then of course sales, sales, you know, because it was a small Because business. it's like you, you keep what you kill. Like there's no, you have to do it. Yep. Like every day, every, every week you've made nothing. You have to make payroll. You have all these bills, yep. right? And then so it, it ends like every week. It ends again. Yeah. Yep. We talk about that all the time. It's like we had, we're having a great year. We're working hard. You know, how do we replicate that? You know, how do you replicate it? Do it next year. You know? You know? Yeah, no, I mean, we're going to have a good run. My opinion, we have like another good like three years and then I think it's just Armageddon, but. <clears throat> yeah, but you know what? The Long Island real estate market, you know. We, we, there's always we, people buying and selling. Listen, there's how many houses for sale all the time? We're just two real estate agents. We just want a piece of the pie, you know? Yeah. And, no, you know of course. If we, there's, a, there's enough. We'll, we'll always get 100, 200, you know, transactions and we hope to get there. That's awesome. You know, Long Island's, you know, even if the market drops, people still want to live here. So. It's not like we live in the middle of, you know, Pennsylvania where no, the market takes There's no way to build out. Like, yeah. It's always. 
So when you guys, so when you, as far as like your marketing goes, right? Cause again, like minimal social media and that's really like, you know, starting to be the bigger push now, even though most agents aren't doing it. Um, a lot of very successful agents, like you take your Brian Karps, your Larry Theodores or your Dara Crawfords or your Laura Duncan Mamishkas of the world. Uh, they start in like one area and like, they like, you know, they're running to talk it or want or farming down and then they branch out from there. Yeah. Right. How did you guys go about doing that? Like, do you have like kind of like a center of influence where you start, or you're just everywhere? Uh, whoever fucking calls us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very peaceful. So man. we've been yeah. we've been to uh, Brooklyn, Astoria, Fresh Meadows, Pennsylvania. Riverhead, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Pennsylvania. Why not? Riverhead. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, wherever the wind takes us. I Riverhead mean, so our, our concentration is. You know, I live in Massapequa. I grew yeah. up in East Meadow. Nice. You, you guys I grew came up to in Massapequa. Wantaw. Yeah. Wantaw. I grew up in Wantaw. I know a lot of people in Wantaw. I said, you know, where do you live now? Uh, East Islip. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, that area of Mass Pequot, Wanto, Seaford, Levittown, East Meadow, we still have a good sphere and we get a lot of stuff from that. But, yeah. you know, you, but, you know, we branched out to everywhere. Like yeah. I said, we, we Astoria this I think, year. We have $4 million properties sold this year. Yeah. I mean, I and I'll be honest with you, I've won my whole, my whole career. I had four this year. Sick, so. Yeah. Uh, my, like, when we started working together, it was like a shotgun blast. It just was really just born of like a sitting down and talking about it for 15 minutes so we start doing it and we're like oh this is kind of working everything's going good all right we got some listings coming in we got some buyers coming. and then we would just kind of add one little thing to our element let's advertise here or let's do this or let's try this or and it really was kind of scatterbrained in the beginning and now we're starting to realize look we need to dedicate some time and energy to each little individual thing. As you yeah. always say, you need to do 30 things great. We're at like five now. Right, we're doing a hundred things, but like, but like five like great. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. And we right. really it's do. not like you're like, oh, what do we do now? No, we, we, we know we got a ton of shit that we need to change. Yeah. Not change, but yeah. do better. And we, and we okay. add like one little yeah. thing like, every few months. We're like, let's yeah. do this and let's rock it and get it solid and get it yeah. down. And apparently the next thing we're doing is a podcast, which seems David. overwhelming, but we'll do it. We no, got to do so more video. Yeah. We know we need to get more, vi we need to get video out there. I mean, more. About, we are sitting in amongst like some two by fours in a warehouse. My first podcast was a free program called Audacity, yep. a $99 microphone in a roach infested basement with no video. Did, did it have to be in that roach infested basement or? I mean, that's where my office was. <laughs> just and when, yeah, Levittown, the roaches were literally this big. I've never seen anything like Brutal. it in my entire life. Brutal. So, and that's how it started. Yeah. The key to this, see, I think the key to everything is consistency. Absolutely. That's it. You know, Tom Ferry said, he said, don't sit there and buy the best microphones and try to set up a, just get out there and do it. As you do it, you'll do it better each time you do it. Yeah, your first video might yeah. not be great. You're not gonna maybe edit it or edit it. Just get it out there. That's he goes, and as you do it, you'll figure out how to get better at it. The speed and the, the speed and the amount of the content is way more important than the quality. Than the production quality. Yeah, than the right. production quality. Obviously it's gotta be like good stuff. But even people like scrolling through the feed and just seeing your face, like there's his face, there's his face. There's oh, you're his on face. all the time. Right, that, yeah. literally, yep. like, I haunt people's fucking dreams. Yeah, yeah. My, mine, personally. There's the, 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 <laughs> you wake up, oh, the God, it's, he's always walking in, he's I like, did it. you see Charlie? Did you Chip see Dan on the like happy, smells like happy. <laughs> <laughs> you are like, I hate this guy. <laughs> like, I hate this guy, but it's, it's really important. So what is your, again, you guys are doing, a, dude, 33 sides. Right, from January to July. January to July is, is a shit ton of business, like a metric shit ton of business, right? How the hell are you doing that? I don't know. It's, don't just, know. it's just happening. Yeah, sweat. I'll out. be honest with you, we haven't, we haven't been cold calling like we were. Yeah. I think we built a good pipeline and then we focused on the business. Now we're looking at each other going, you know, we still have plenty of stuff in contract and stuff moving down the, down the road, but we're looking at each other like, okay, we need to, let's yeah. not forget our roots, what yeah. we need to do. But we do a really excellent job with our clients. Yeah. I, I truly believe that. Rob and I handle yeah. our oh, clients. Bro, I've seen you. That, that deal we're doing at Massachusetts Park, like. Yeah. I, I she mean, loves me. When you talk about white glove yeah. service, yeah. like you guys are, are, are fucking top aces. Honestly, like that's. Real white glove type of shit. I think that's Thank a big you. part of it is that. Like, I think Joe you carried I, her to her car. Yeah. Like yeah. this. Yeah. Like it, it crazy. I, I might not be able to make the closing Friday. She was like, yeah. she was upset. She was like, ah, yeah. when am I ever going to see you again? I'm over to Pennsylvania. Yeah. I'm like, you'll see me. Don't worry. We'll get together. We'll yeah. in your town. We'll get coffee or something like that. But I think the thing that works well for us is we both owned businesses. Yeah. So we understand what customer service is. Yes. And we both are people people. So people that know us, like us, they want to work with us. They want to do business with us. If their mom's aunt is selling a house, they're like, oh, call Rob, call Joe. You know, it's so amazing we do how have a great sphere. And then, you know, really 
the other stuff picks up. We, you get that one deal and then all of a sudden you, you meet them and you start getting into the deal and it's like, okay, um, when we're done with this, I got the other one for you too. We just kind of wanted to test you out. And yeah. by the way, my sister's looking for a house yeah. here. That's awesome. Yeah. And so it just, it just, it's customer service. Like that, yeah. yeah. It's customer well, service. I mean, yeah. I mean, you guys are personable and you're funny as hell. And like the dynamic to the two of you guys is very cool. Yeah. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. We, we, yeah. you know, and we, we've cut from the same cloth. So he can pick up one of my customers and I can pick up yeah. one of his. Yeah. And we know that they're going to get the same service. So I don't have to worry about, like, hey, Rob, you got to do this with it. He knows. I'll just yeah. say, look, you know, I, I packed the storage container for, for, for that lady. She lived here by herself in a condo and she was moving to Arizona and and she this said, guy. can you help me out one day? Whatever, Willowwood. Whatever. He was in Willow, he I was in Willowwood, Willowwood for, with, uh, with a scrub brush doing, <laughs> she wanted me to clean the sidewalk and then she goes, can you help me? And I said, yeah, she had like a regular car, I had the bigger truck at the time and we loaded like 30 bins and took them to Beth Page and put them in the storage yeah. container for her. And I did that with her. And my yeah. wife's like, what? And I said, you don't understand whatever, this. It, whatever it takes. Whatever, whatever it takes. takes. Whatever it takes. How about the house with the plaster casts? Yeah. Remember that one? The base, dude, this lady's basement, she, she had ceramics. 600 ceramic casts. Those things weigh a ton. It was insane. We had to clear the whole thing. Yeah. So yeah. we'll call them ceramic places. Yeah, and can we, you want to buy ceramic casts? Just you know? Yeah. yeah. How'd you get rid of it? Yeah. And it, um, a mainly a dumpster, but dumpster we, and some ceramic some places. Stuff, yeah. yeah, some yeah. ceramic places. Yeah. So don't don't question us when we ask for our commission, please. We're full service. <laughs> full service. You want to pay less, you'll yeah. you'll get less. Yeah. This is what you get from from our team. You know, we're there taking no. the garbage out. I opened an attic one day for a walkthrough. She had all the Christmas decorations in there. Yeah. Uh, the one on in Merrick, and I said, "It's got to be empty. Are they going to charge you?" She's like, well, can you help me? And I'm there carrying them all down to the curb because I didn't want her to get a $500 or $1,000 charge to you're, clean it out. You're a freaking saint. Good man. But you Seriously. Know, man. Yeah. I put my head on the pillow at night. That's that's the way we run our business. How yeah. do you guys as partners, right? Because I feel like I've, I've never had a partnership scenario. I think when they work well, they're amazing. When they don't, which is most of the time, it's like just Armageddon, right? So how do you guys, because it's, it's usually like one person is doing more work than the other and it breeds resentment and all that. So how do you guys complement each other and then balance responsibilities and things? Well, start off, we were told it wouldn't work. Joe does more work than I do. There was, that's no, the bottom line. that's not true. That's, <laughs> and I don't feel that way, so that's good. We were, just to start, and I'll let you finish, we were told the partnership wouldn't work because the Kellum model for a team building um, doesn't work for partners. I hate when people And we were, told by, we were told by, by a younger agent, a younger yeah. agent, yeah. That that oh you can't have two rainmakers and you can't you're it's not gonna make it work and and I was told by the other guy too the, the big guy too yeah. said yeah well are you guys are gonna be partners how's that gonna work yeah. remember you know yeah, yeah. so and, what do they uh, say now when it's working we don't I don't, I don't, I don't know talk to, I don't need to oh oh you're not yeah. there anymore we're not, but even even still it doesn't matter to me they're not gonna, what are they gonna say to you hey we were wrong yeah. The, the, they should. Yeah, I think people should more often. I do. Everybody's but wrong. I think it's, all the time. It's, it's unorthodox. Okay yeah. I think this is unorthodox, but I also think it just works for us. I, you know, we respect each other. Uh, we help each other. We uh, compliment each other. Uh, we keep each other motivated. And you ask when someone's working harder it's, than the other, what do we do? Um, instead of saying, "Hey, you're working harder than me," he goes, uh, "Shit, I got to work harder to yeah. match him." So it really is. Keep, it's actually kind of nice because he'll get like awesome. he'll get on a roll. He'll get two or three listings, and I'm like, "Shit." <laughs> Now I gotta pick up my game, man. Right. You know, and uh, and then I get out there and I start cracking, and he's like, "Dude, uh, I got nothing going on. You're killing it." And I'm like, "Am I? You just step the game up, you know?" So we keep each other really feed motivated, and we yeah. feed off each other's That's energy. Cool. And, and yeah. I and I also, I'll be honest with you, I respect where he's at in his life in his time period. He's yeah. got younger kids. My kids are 16 and 14. Yeah. I know where he was. Do you do you have siblings? Younger siblings? No. I feel like you're like an older brother. I I like have you, like you wanted to be an older. brother. I have a, a half sister right. who's 18. He, yeah, he's yeah, so I have a half sister who's eighteen. Like, he's a mentor. He, uh, yeah, and, like in, in like, the true sense of the word, he is my mentor. Yeah. He mentored yeah. me into my the business. kids hate me for it because it's, <laughs> it's always a constant lecture. They're like, "Is this going to be a lecture?" Yeah. You know, but my son's fourteen. He's got a job and he started an IRA already. Yeah. That's all. So obviously, I mean, all it. the shit that I'm saying to him got through, and that's my nice. daughter's about to start hers. Wow! So I told them, "You're going to take half your pay. You put it away. I'll match you. Whatever wow. you put in there. That's up, what's to, up. up to your max. Yeah." Start it now. When by the time you're Very 55, smart. 60, you'll have you, you'll be nice. set. So, yeah. but you know, back to us. We just we just keep. So I know where he's at with yeah. his kids. So I, I you know, it's Very okay. respectful of my yeah. insanity. It's it's you tough. Know? It's I tough with little ones. I mean, it's you know, they're three, right? I don't know how many know. times I've been on the phone with Melnick and. My kids are screaming in the background, and he's like, "Dude, what do you got going on?" Oh, no, I do it all the time. Like, I'm watching I'm like, babies. Shut those, I don't know. I shut no those idea. fucking kids up! <laughs> I yell on the phone. Like, you shut those fucking kids up, bro! I can't. Even what did imagine. I say to you the I one time? I can't even imagine. The one time I'm watching my twins, they were like babies. He calls me. He's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm changing a shitty diaper." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "All right, call me back. All right. Smell it through the phone." No, but we. 
I respect where he's at because you know what? In 10 years when his kids are older and they, you know he's got some more time, yeah. I'm fucking done. I'm not, I remember all those times I picked yeah. you up? No. And it's not like I'm not producing. Nah, you're going to work until you drop, bro. He does. You're going to work until you drop. Probably. I'm hoping, to, yeah, I'm hoping by the time we get to a point where we can leverage out a lot of stuff and still, yeah. still just oversee. But you like the action. Yeah, we're starting, yeah. We're, we're starting I like to sit. sit. I like to go on a nice sit. Do you? Yeah, I love it. It's an adrenaline rush, man. It's a psychological. When you sit down on a listing appointment, yeah. you get burnt. Like, after an hour and you get in that car and I call my wife, I'm like this. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, you don't understand. Everything that comes out of your mouth has to be pre-planned in your head to not, 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 not so much offend, but you know, I'm convincing people who had never met me before to trust me with a half a million dollar, a million dollar transaction. Yeah, it's a big deal. So I have an hour or 45 minutes or half hour sometimes to pitch myself and make sure I don't say the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you get out of that, and you know what it's like, you get out of that and you get in the you're, car, you're, you're like- Mentally yeah. and physically- You're like, you're like oh. yep. And so then when they call you and tell you it's yours, it's <sighs> all worth it. Yeah. It's a lot, that's yeah. a lot. But you go on two listing appointments in a day? Yeah. Oof, it's, a, it's a mental dream. Tiring. A mental yeah. dream. Yep. So um, what is, I'm gonna guess my final question for you guys is, what's next? What's next? What's next? Growing, expanding. I think just you know trying to keep leveling up and get better, and you know do more um, investments. You know starting to try and buy some investment properties. You know model after what you do with like um, you know buy and holds and stuff like that. That's really the objective. We I have a small property yeah. management portfolio. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So we're trying to we're going to try to add to that through other investors and yes, stuff. That's so cool. Um, you know just just keep building and being able to. To still work and make money. Yeah, when, that's for me. When's the podcast coming out? Can we put a hard? Can we put a hard date on? This? I got to figure out how to do all this stuff. I don't know. This Dude, is, we got to get. We got to go get like a, a steamer. What do you trunk. got? Like a dat there? It's just oh, like yeah. a dat. No, this is like a trunk. I just it's like a to steamer look. trunk. No, what, is, yeah. what do you, you record it? You just record it in there. Yeah. That's it. It's easy. And then you upload it. We're bringing. Go, okay, it's a podcast. You just. You can We're literally. You can system, literally. Yeah. You could put a mic in on a table between the two of you guys yeah. plug it into a laptop with audacity which is free we'll help set you guys yeah you all right we'll do that and then, i'll do it yeah i'll do it Man. Yeah. a little banter david and goliath yeah that's it i'll tell you what you get get a guest right we'll do your first one on me what do you mean like we'll produce it for you oh really yeah first one on that'd me. be awesome what's the hard date october 1st october 1st I like that's it. the wait what day of the week is that sunday hold on <laughs> take them in the bahamas are you in the Bahamas? Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, it's a Friday. October 1st, Hang your first up. podcast. Wait, I can't commit. Jesus Christ. No, this guy. Like, I'm trying to create a dramatic effect. No, nope, I'm good. October 1st. October 1st. Like, I'm trying way to, to, I got way to, I go into way to put a wet blanket on I'm trying to create dramatic effect. Here. October 1st. Yeah. I'm Jewish and Woo! Italian. You're Italian. You should, you should get yeah, like, and I grew up with all, I grew up with all Jews, so it's, it's... We do drama. Yeah. That's drama it. and drama guilt. guilt. And food. And food. Surrounded by food. Exactly. All right, so October 1st, okay. we're going to produce it. It's your first podcast. Like we'll it. find a guest. All right, we'll and get then, somebody on And there. then that's it. We get the ball rolling. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Thanks Thank for holding us accountable. Really Thanks for it. having Listen, us. Uh, 20 something years, bro. 30 years. It's Almost a long 30 time. years. It's got, yeah. It's a if long people, time. Uh, if people looking to buy, sell a house, or join a team, how do people get a hold of you? Where do they find you on social media and such? Uh, islandteamny.com. Uh, I'm Scotcha underscore sells underscore real estate on Instagram. That's where I do most of my uh, social media prowess. Yep. Uh, so you could DM me there. Island Team on Facebook. Yep, Island Team on Facebook. My cell phone number is 516 909 1356. Call me anytime. Yes. Like Charles, I'm a good time. Yep, absolutely. If you are a lonely woman in the Midwest and you need someone to talk to you for only $8.99 a minute, I'm your guy. Rob's your guy. Yeah, my wife won't like that. $8.99 a minute. $8.99 a minute, she might. <laughs> She'd be all right. $54 an hour? Yeah, 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 right. That's only go. $54 an hour. So, right? All right. No, $540 an hour. Yeah, okay. Okay, you can call me too at 516-315-4991. And I am handsome, literally and figuratively, and this is Smells Like Cat Pee. And if you have a house that smells like cat pee, dated from the 1960s or human pee. Or dead body. Right. I'm quick, I'm easy, Lord knows. I'm a good You're time. You're a great time. I want to buy it. And obviously, if you have any permit issues all across Long Island, you call the captain. There's nobody else. 516-513-8838. That's a wrap.